depth of focus and depth of field. The depth of field tells you about the limits. Depth of field tells you about the limits. How much sample you can take up and down. And the object will be in focus. Right? Because you have two planes, major planes in microscopy. One is the object plane and the other is the image plane. So, if you slightly move the object in optical microscopy, the focus is lost. But in electron microscopy, the focus is still there and it gives you an opportunity to tilt sample, to move sample, to take sample up and down despite the very limited space here. Because if you can't do that, then the microscopy system, the electron microscope system is so complicated that everything needs to be focused. So you have all the choices from the gun you start. It is the gun focused or not. The gun is at the proper place or not. The gun should be tilted or it should be kept straight. Right? Then how, what type of geometry the gun current makes on the screen. So you directly project gun, the electron beam from the gun onto the viewing screen. And if its geometry is perfect, is expected, there are specific shapes of the image that is made. For example, if this is the gun, then it should give me this uh, with parallel edges, something like that picture of the gun because electrons are coming from here. So the electron which strikes the screen, it will give you an image like this. If the gun is something circular, then you will get a circular type of image or disk at the, on the screen and you align the gun accordingly from there. If any part of that specific image is missing from the screen, this means that the gun is not aligned. If you see any astigmatism, then gun stigmatism should be, not should be applied to correct that. If you look at something and it doesn't appear as it should be, this means there is some problem in the weaving system. For example, I told you that, I give you the example of moon, that if somebody has poor eyesight and they look into the moon and a rim type appears around the moon, that rim is because of the stigmatism, because your eye can't give you the same image at the viewing point as compared to the actual object. So, the depth of field allows you to move the sample slightly above and slightly below and when they are saying parallel to the illuminating beam. Parallel to the illuminating beam means that if you are here or here, this is the object area. So, if the object is here, it is at focus when you are talking of optical microscopy. But if in optical microscopy it is put this way or this way, it will not be in focus. But in electron microscope you have a depth, a depth of field where the object is in focus. The object is in focus. Remember this clearly. Secondly, when you are taking image, then the image screen is here. Right? The camera is slightly below. So if that moment 
if you do that movement in optical microscopy you will not be able to get to, to record a well focused image but in electron microscopy it allows you and that is the depth of focus because some people call the scanning microscope as well a three dimensional imaging device although we are always taking the two dimensional plane but that depth of focus depth of focus allows you to look into the pore in the sample as well as the surface of the sample so if you can focus the pore as well as the surface this mean there is some distance along which if you move within that range the image is still in focus and that enables you to record the focused image on the on the photographic film are you take it to the uh, digital camera and uh, see it on the computer screen so this is because of the depth of focus depth of field associated with the object and depth of focus associated with the image and at the end i found a very nice sentence this one that the depth of focus bears the tolerance of placement of the image plane so it can tolerate that much moment without compromising the focus similarly if you use the same thing for the depth of field then the depth of field mere the tolerance and the tolerance of placement of the object within that range right not beyond that range so that range this this one up to there and similarly there to there they are the ranges going to the next slide uh this is the condenser lens the parallel beam of electrons sent from the electron gun by the potential difference it it is received by the condenser lens and the condenser lens focuses it on to a specific area now how how this focusing is done to make it a parallel beam to reach the sample this focusing if you look into this these distances that where it should cross over that can be shifted up and down and when you are exactly having the very well focused beam it will be the cross over will be within the lens and the lens is here the electromagnetic field the lens is here the electromagnetic field and electromagnetic magnetic field is dealing with the electron to root them to root them in the way you need them so if you look into this slide you will see that left of the crossover and that in one is the right of the crossover and that one is in the middle of the crossover so when you minimum beam size and maximum brightness brightness is associated with the intensity of the beam and as well as i have explained it several times that if the brightness is more than the required then it confuses the image it gives you a blurred image and i give the example of the flash lights when the flash lights are on your front and your front you can't see clearly but when the flash lights are dimmed the 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 light is faded down then you can see things easily the same thing happens here that if the brightness is not appropriate dear the brightness you need to see trucks and tractors and cars here the brightness you need is to see the angstrom level features 
So it is very, very sensitive to that brightness as well. And when you go to higher and higher magnification, then the brightness automatically decreases. High magnification means taking the screen away. And taking the screen away through various lenses and apertures, you are eliminating the large angle scattered beams, you are eliminating the large angle emitted beams by the electron gun and through all this process when the beam you minimize the intensity of the beam to just visibility level and when that visibility level is not making the things visible then you allow you use apertures so that the beam is not spread that much that you, it becomes invisible, right? So the light is above the room somewhere and you keep the intensity of the beam low as well as bright enough to see things. And I told you that the microscopy room is dark, always complete dark, because if it is not dark, then the outside light doesn't allow you to distinguish between the electron beam light and the outside light. So it is done in complete dark room so that a minor, a little bit brightness enables you to see things. Because you are dealing with 300, 200 kV voltage beam, then you are dealing with angstrom level features. So if the beam intensity is high, there is more possibility that your sample will be damaged and you will not be able to see anything. Or the image will be moving. When the sample is damaging, then the sample appears as if it is moving and you can't record an image of that dissolving sample under the beam. Right? So you always keep, it is safe for the microscope to keep the intensity minimum, to keep the number of electron beams minimum so that their interpretation become easier and uh, there is another, uh, we will discuss it in detail when we are uh, discuss the diffraction, but in X-ray you don't see double diffraction, but in electron because of the very high energy of the electron, you see double diffraction as well. And what double diffraction means? That if you have the 10200 reflection from a crystal and 100 is not allowed, 100 is not allowed, that plane is missing because of the symmetry of the crystal system of, uh, of the space group, which is not allowed. But in electron diffraction, you will see that. The double diffraction will occur. Double diffraction means that the beam is diffracted once from a specific interatomic plane, right? When it is diffracted once and it reaches here, for example, but if it is here again diaphragmatic and goes there, then it will give you the midway spot. And for 200, you will have 100 as well, which is wrong. And people, microscopists know that if a spot, additional spot, that is the midway between the 200 or 400 like that, along that particular line, and it is not continuous, systematic, then this means it is a double diffraction spot because of the energy of the electron beam. And if it is a regular pattern throughout, then this means that if it was a cubic crystal structure and that 100 HKL indices were representing five angstrom latest parameter. 100 is a latest parameter. And if it is representing five 
interplanar spacing or lattice parameter, then the one in the middle, the 200 gives you 5 and the 100 will give you 10. This means the crystal cell, the unit cell has enlarged or doubled along that particular lattice parameter. If you see this part only at 200, then the A axis of the crystal is 5. But if you see a spot at 100, then that represents that the, that interplanar spacing is 10, double of the 5. This means that that particular lattice parameter has been doubled and this frequently happens when we change the phases. Ordered phases and disordered phases. Ordered phases are those where you induce disordering. Ordered phases are those where you induce disordering by substitution, by doping, by changing the temperatures, right? Various sorts of changes you bring in the material. So if you induce a disorder, the resulting unit cell is called ordered unit cell. And if it has not been disordered, then it is called disordered. It is the inverse type thing. Because when it was not ordered, it was giving you five angstrom interplanar spacing. And when it was disturbed, the parameter was changed. Then we say we have ordered this structure. A new ordering was introduced. And new ordering introduces and they have many benefits in the applications of the materials. Right? So ordered structures are always desired in many cases. And if that occurs because of the double diffraction, then it is not an ordered structure, but happens accidentally, you can say, because of the double diffraction of the L diffracted beam. Because of the double diffraction of the diffracted beam. And if that additional spot is symmetrically throughout there, and it is not missing in any direction, when you change Tilt the sample and look where the 100 contribution comes because of that plane and it is continuously there. Then this is new ordering in the system and we call them ordered crystals. Particularly in polarizable crystal it is common there. So we were talking about the energy of the beam and uh, the focusing of the beam. So when the, the beam is there, then it has the maximum intensity.